Hello, it's fantastic to be here. I'm Tony McManus and sitting in tonight for uh, Gary. And have we got some fantastic letters? Uh, letter number one, we've called, uh, for legal reasons, we've called Rubber Dub Dub. And it's a story about a uh, person whose uh, husband is probably fooling around. We'll discuss that more in just a moment. There is the question of the sisters. Now, sisterly love can either work for you or sometimes work against you. Uh, this is a situation where some of the sisters might be looking to take over mum's fortune from one other sister. And Andrew writes to us and tells us about the fact that he's a, uh, he thinks he's a mug and maybe his wife is actually fooling around. He suspects it given that there's one on the way. Uh, we're going to look at all that. Hope you can stay with us. We've got a great panel lined up for you. It's sweet and sour. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for sweet and sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. <laughs> It is fantastic to be here sitting in for, uh, what's his name? Gary Richards. Gary. Uh, so don't adjust your set and stay with us because we have arguably, we think this is going to be an award winning program. <laughs> We think, we probably think we, it might happen that way. May I introduce the panel for tonight on uh, Sweet and Sour? Uh, over to my right, I have uh, the very gifted, the very talented, the always exciting, here is Lewis. Oh, hello, everyone. I want to be like Walid and win a gold Logie, so I want my yes. best behaviour this evening. He was, he was just sensational Wouldn't a couple of weeks. He was just uh, wonderful. Uh, now, does everybody remember the lovely uh, Lucy, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which may become very important a bit later on when we read one of these <laughs> letters. Oh, no, a different letter. Uh, so, hello, Lucy. Lovely to see you Hello, again. Tony. Uh, thank you, you for pretending to be Gary. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, that little number, because we get letters about this, comes from? Memory Lane. Looks uh, sensational. A little bit. Uh, hello, Alex. Hello. Tony. You look amazing as well. Oh, thanks. Do you know, now that you're, when do you, when do you turn horny? 40. Must be soon. But you I thought you said, when do you turn horny? Oh, that's what I heard too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't 40. turn horny. When do you 40? turn horny? Oh, jeez. The next equinox. <laughs> Hello, Jason. <laughs> Where's how you going? T Mac, good? good to be here. Nice to have you on the program. We've got lots of letters to uh, give away. Do we have to talk about social media and prizes at this stage, or we missed that opportunity? We might come back and uh, do that. Would you like to do letter number one? We're about to do letter number one. This is from uh, Marilyn. Marilyn's from Preston in Victoria. Thank you, Marilyn. Have a listen to this. Uh, dear Mitch, Mitch is not here. Look, it's a strange one, says Marilyn, and I don't feel comfortable writing this at all. But it's not something that I can canvass with anyone else. My husband, who's a bit of a lad, goes out with the boys at least once a week. I give him plenty of latitude and he also gives me the same. But after 12 years of marriage and two kids, I'm thinking that perhaps I'm giving him too wide a berth. He and his mates are now spending each and every Friday evening going to these so-called proliferating... I think that's the word, massage therapy centres. Do you know what they are, Alex? Uh, no. Complete with coloured flashing open lights, signs. And then off to finish up having drinks at strip clubs. What? All this until the wee small hours and when he comes home he's quite distant. He used to be quite amorous. He's even started buying a membership to those websites. And I figure that his mates, these clubs and websites, aren't doing our relationship any good. But any good at all, but I just don't know how to put an end to these Friday night visits. Please, panel, what do you suggest to get my amorous husband back? Well, where do we start? May I uh, perhaps start with... Uh, let, Alex, this is a good one for you. Alex, hello. Just uh, what would you do? Would, would, have you ever been in a situation like this? No, why would you want him back anyway? Good question. After, if he's fooling around like that, why? Like, go out and meet your own fella. He's obviously going to these places because he's getting stimulated by it. So either you're not doing enough at home or he's just bored with you. That's it. Well, right. you know, like, I wouldn't like it. If, if, it, if I was in your position, I wouldn't like it and I'd let him know that I didn't like it and then I'd start going out with the girls and having my own fun and I'd probably sleep in another room and then um, just have my own fun, yeah. Uh, now, Jason, the question I guess is, how unusual do you suspect this sort of a relationship might be? 
I don't know that it's all that unusual at all, really. I think maybe he's just a bit more open and honest about it than some other guys are. I have a few concerns with Marilyn. First of all, this is the only place you can canvas problems. Clearly you haven't got any friends, so maybe there's something wrong with you for starters. Um, as far as options to get your amorous husband back, maybe go with him. Buy some costumes to be wearing when he gets home. But look, I don't really know. I, I, I haven't Costume. got that much experience with this sort of thing, but Marilyn, at the end of the day, whatever happens, I hope, like your hubby, you get a happy finish. Now, <laughs> I had to be there, didn't I? <laughs> Lewis, here is the voice of reason. Oh, well, thank you, sir, because I don't have much for Marilyn. Um, when he comes back on Friday and he's less amorous, then is he less amorous? Like the rest of the week, or are you still getting? Yeah, still it's getting numb. Great you're question. Still, you're still getting <laughs> And uh, has not work on a Sunday? Well, it's black and white. And if you know he's nobbing or getting knobbed or paying to get knobbed diamonds or whatever, <laughs> right? Then um, <laughs> you're gonna have to turf him if you want to turf him. But you know, Friday night with the boys, that's all right. And if he goes and has a bit of a laugh and gets a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a candy treat, then that's fine as well. Do you know what I mean? But. Basically, you want him back. If you want him back, then you're going to have to change things up a touch. Maybe Friday he comes home from work and you're in your negligee out the door with the leather boots on going, do you want to stay in tonight, baby? That could help. Yeah, That's all I got. there you go. That's all I got. That's nice. Uh, Lucy, let me just ask you this, if I may. If you were in a situation where your partner, your boyfriend, your husband was behaving like this, how would you feel about it? Well, I would do everything I could to make him stay at home with me. <laughs> And that would could you do? be... I would get a hot tub. I would invite his friends over. I would get the video camera going, make a little movie, mm -hmm. pay off the credit card debt that he's been racking up on these dirty sites, <laughs> and tell him that don't think about the kids because he's already stuffed their life up anyway. He's probably got some extra siblings running around for them that no one knows about. Lewis, have you actually been, ever been to a strip club? I went on a box night once. And uh, they had to drag me in there, you know. I wasn't going on my own volition. <laughs> and I gave most of my dash to the ugliest mm, one because yeah. I felt sorry for it. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you ever walked in and, and been to a strip club? Now, be honest about this. I have been to a strip club. Oh, yeah. And? And I can go upside down on a pole. There you go. <laughs> Here it is. It's exercise. <laughs> Alex, yes, have you? Yes, I have been to it. Now, I, here, I, I, I actually let me just, like going there. That's it's, it's actually quite... I go to the Varga Lounge quite, well, not a lot, but I've been there a few times, and the girls are really nice, and the crowd, the, the guys don't bother you because they're too busy is. looking at all the vaginas and boobies. There's no vagina. There were no vaginas when I, I didn't oh see one. Oh, my more. God, yes, they, yes, one there. Yeah. You're going yeah. the wrong one. Because I mean, a good club is so well controlled. It's actually it less intimidating. And they won't let anyone... No one's allowed to touch you or anything like that. They're not allowed to touch the girls. No, it's all very point. professional. Jason. It's more controlled and more well protected when the girls are the ones taking their clothes off. I have worked as a G-string waiter back in my younger, more hairy <laughs> days. <laughs> And I've got to tell you, there's no hands-off policy when it's the boys getting the kid off. No, women are brutal, Sexist. Aren't they? Se yeah. I used to come, I, I, I'd have fingernail marks on my bottom. It was horrible, horrible. After, you loved it. After it wasn't bad to four or five years, I just decided to chuck it in. It was that bad. You didn't get enough tips. <laughs> what? He didn't get enough tips. There you go. I <laughs> Let's enunciate. Could have been his waiting skill. We're going to have to right? enunciate tips. <laughs> Uh, this is the little program that you know and love. Uh, hope you're having a great time. We're having a great time. This is Sweet and Sour. We're back straight after this. Well, there you go. Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out our past episodes? Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind-the-scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. Facebook and Twitter is the place to be. The movie this week, tickets, thank you, uh, Nat, is called Margarita. Margarita, yeah, the ticket. So each of the letters that we read out to... Uh, have uh, letters, uh, uh, tickets to go and see the uh, movie Margarita. We're up to letter number two. This is from Liz at Henley Beach in uh, South Australia. Have you been uh, to Henley Beach in South Australia, Lewis? Uh, no. no, I haven't no. been to South Australia at all. Been everywhere else. Yeah, it's a lovely place. Lots of churches. I and hear. Liz writes, this is a very important story, so have a listen to this. I come from a very strange family of first class biatches. I like to think that I've been the one out of the siblings who has always tried to hold it 
sanely together for all. Now, Mum's becoming a little frail and the time's come to place her in a nursing home. So my husband suggests that, uh, he suggested, and I've come to agree, she's over 90. Mum's got plenty of money, but I've been the one caring for her for the past three years. After a visit from some of my sisters, uh, my mum changed her tune and told me very directly that if I placed her in a nursing home, she'd cut me out of the will and give it all to my other three sisters, my three other sisters. Uh, none of my wonderfully caring sisters will actually share the caring responsibilities. How often do we hear this? And all of them are lining up for the money. Hubby insists that I have mum mentally assessed now and have her declared mentally unstable before she has the opportunity to be manipulated by my sisters. And then I would become her financial guardian. I think you need to see a lawyer, son. Is there another way that I haven't, con that I haven't considered because I really don't want to go down this path, but I can be as big a biatch as the rest of them if I have to. That's from uh, Liz of uh, Henley Beach. Interesting situation. God forbid, Lewis, we ever find ourselves in that situation. Well, you see, I feel really guilty with this letter because uh, my mum's in England and uh, you know the other siblings looking after her and I don't really do much and so it's pulling out of my heartstrings but you can't blame your mum for not wanting to go to a home. I wouldn't want to go to home. I'd like to be shot. You know, boof, just no, take me no, out. No, 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 well, no. you can't, you can't, can you? <laughs> you and uh, times in the home. But check this out. She carried you for nine months, birthed you into the world, looked after you, brought you up, made sure you were kosher so at least you could do is look after her until she pops laughing and you know money's the root of all evil oh, oh, come back come back come back money is the root of all evil chicken so if you're doing it for money it's a bit a uh, bit harsh do you know what i mean it is and i agree with you but you know mum's 90. And, yeah but and, it's just and, a mama i don't look after be, my mama until she pops well there'll be people watching now that have parents and you gotta look after them who are not able to look after themselves so at some point uh -huh. choices have to be made it's, yeah but she it's seems uh, quite uh, able and nifty. Lucy, would you, because I'm getting a bit old, would you tuck me away somewhere, put me and wait for the diamonds to arrive? <laughs> would you put me in a in a home? Depends how much fun you were. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're good to still have around or if it was time to are we, are we put live you quietly to we sleep. Are we Huh? It depends if, you know. Well, what would you, do, what would you say to Liz? What, what would I what say to Liz? What can Liz do about her mum where her sisters are just trying to get the bucks? I think her first problem is that she's still talking to her crazy family. If they're crazy and you're saying, what are you doing hanging out with them? Like, you do not belong in that family at all. Cut your losses, make your own money. Or alternatively, you know, see if you can get her classified as insane. Be a bitch to all your sisters. Hang around for another 10 years, because that's all your mum's going to last. No one lives over 100 once they get the letter from the Queen. And work out your return on investment, if you're really that same. Like, work out how much you'll get per each year of wiping her ass oh. and cleaning up her vomit and listening to her nagging, insane, losing her mind. And then go, is it worth it? Is that money worth it? Well, I hope you have children one day who look after you <laughs> just like that. Well, I'll pay people in a home to look after me. Well, I'll pay them good money, I'll have a good time and a good doctor. Alex, uh, this is for, for, for me, this is not that far away. I'm a bit sensitive about this. because Oh, hang could, on. Yeah? For you and me, well, I don't have any family me, to look after oh, me. Well, see, I had to put Dad through this and it's a very tricky time. Well, um, I know a girl, actually she's, she's been on the panel a few times. Her name's uh, Barbara Kendall and um, she's a beautiful girl. She's got a huge heart. She, um, her mother's got cancer and Barbara's packed everything up and moved down to Bunbury to be with her mother and she looks after her mother and it's been very very tiring and, and it's it's gonna it's changed her life but it's the best days that she's gonna remember when when her mother passes yeah. on because it's not long and um, even I had that experience when I moved back home when ANSET collapsed I had to move back home and live with my mother and I was there for eight months and at the time I thought I was gonna go crazy but then now that my mother's passed on I think about it mm. and it was the best time I ever had and I, I, I just I think going into a home it would be soul crushing you know especially if you've got family that don't care yeah. about you and and we've just not long ago had Mother's Day and all these things are very important mm. 
what would you do if you were talking to Liz? What advice would you give to Liz? If I was talking to Liz, I would say to Liz, if, what guarantee have you got that if you do keep care, caring for your mother, that she's going to give you anything anyway? Get it in writing. Percentage of care equals percentage of will. That way your sisters get jack, you get something for your effort and your mum can't get dementia and forget that she owes you all that money. Pretty straightforward. It is. And, I, and look, if this is a real situation for anybody that might be tuned in, I highly recommend that you speak to somebody who is uh, expert in this area, which would be for the most part a family law uh, uh, can't specialist. can't contest the will if, if the will gets changed? The well, sisters can contest the yeah, will? Because yeah, that does it, that Tony, does you're getting very wise and sage advice. Have you not seen this show before? Oh. You could get Liz, get, get Liz I'm to sorry. read your own heart. I'm just <laughs> having, I'm having a moment. <laughs> I'm having that. a moment. It is very, very important. Uh, we, the best is yet to come, I promise you. Thank you for being part of it. Sweet and sour. We're back straight after this. So there you go. This is Sweet and Sour, and that's the way it was. Time for Sweet and Sour. <laughs> right here on Sweet and Sour. <laughs> it's time for Sweet and Sour. I love the uh, jingle. What was the other TV show? Lewis, you'll know this. Yeah. Where the star always sang his opening credits. Who was that? Minder. Remember Minder? Minder? Oh my god. Yeah. With Dennis Waterman. Dennis was the oh, person yeah. that sang right the Right people, right time, just yep. the wrong location. Dennis Waterman. That's one. For those that are old enough to remember. We're up to letter three, people. And I read this and I couldn't believe it. So I'll read it to you. This is letter number three. Uh, it comes from... Uh, no, we've already read that one, sorry. It comes from uh, Andrew Glenn Forrest, who says, uh, Dear panel, hello everyone. I admit to being a mug. I'm not dumb even though the missus thinks I am. She's probably had at least 20 men in our marital bed and thinks, I don't know about it. Really, she's just a piece of trash. And I don't know how I married her other than arguing that I was in love and she was the first woman I'd slept with. That was nine years ago. Now, I don't have a prenup. She won't leave me because the money the business brings in is pretty great. It's terrific, even in this poor economic climate. Muggins Me gave her half of the business ownership when I started it. I don't have the money to buy her out. I can't start again because the market just won't sustain another identical operation. We're with her so far in the same market. She doesn't work, she just spends and sleeps around. And here's the tag. Now, she's having my baby, she's pregnant. How the hell do I get rid of this problem out of my life and, and uh, leave my financial security intact? Andrew, uh, a very difficult situation, but to here to explain, to assist in this dilemma, here is uh, the man of the moment, Jason. Andrew Glenn Forrest. I thought at first it was a letter from Twiggy. I was going to say, well, she's going to take your cash. Um, few concerns here. She's probably had, a, probably had at least 20 men in their bed. Now, for starters, how big is that bed? <laughs> Just let me get that out of the way. Now. <laughs> you slept with her nine years ago. I assume you've only been married nine years. That's more than two external roots a year. And I know people who aren't married who don't get that many. Um, in fact, Hello. quite close by. Um, don't have a prenup. Okay, that was a bad move. Now she's pregnant. He doesn't say, Tony, he doesn't say that she's pregnant with his child. Well. So my, well, but my only hope I've got for you at this point, Andrew from Glen Forest, is uh, get a DNA test, cross your fingers, it's not yours. <laughs> That'd be a great way to get out of the marriage. Is it the same here as what it is in America, where if your wife cheats, you get, you don't have to give her all the money from the pre... Or does she get it anyway? I think she gets it. She owns half the business case. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, this is a good point. Mm. And Can you run the business into the ground? Let's take this to the family uh, court. Andrew, uh, you're probably a little spineless, but to clarify that, Alex. Oh, Andy Pandy, you got yourself into a bit of a pickle. Maybe your pickle got you into trouble in the first place. I, just, I don't, you know, like you're saying now she's pregnant, so obviously you are having sex with her because if you're saying now she's pregnant, means that you know that you've been there so now she's pregnant she's told you or maybe she just if she's that horrible she's got herself pregnant with maybe someone else because i know a girl that's actually done that got herself pregnant with another guy mm. never slept with a husband who's a gazillionaire and then she um realized she was pregnant so she had to sleep with the husband so that she wouldn't get out of the gazillions but anyway it came out later but um you know i think you're just you know sucked in 
a sore lock inside. Let me, let me <laughs> Too just... bad, you know, you married her and that's it. In, in another world, I hope you don't, you, you spend a lot of time in the air. I used to. Yeah, I know. So you would have had a lot of conversations with a lot of uh, people, a lot of men. Is this an unusual situation that this woman is in <laughs> and, and this bloke finds himself in? Andrew. No, no. I, I, I actually, in when I was in the airline, you had a lot of conversations. There was, about this. yeah, there was um, a lot. There was a situation where there was a certain person that did that. <laughs> you know, because she what? thought she wanted money and she got it and did it deceitfully. Name names, Lucy. What this you? this will <laughs> never she happen to you. You are you are such a graceful woman. Yes, yes. Thank you for clarifying that to all potential marriage people out there. I'm very lovely, I am available and <laughs> life is good. I think though that Andrew is a spineless for not confronting yeah. her in the first place. Yeah. You know, the first guy, you say something, otherwise what's it gonna be, a hundred? A hundred <laughs> potential baby daddies? Like, you don't know who the father of the child is. You're not going to find out for another how many months until it's born and they can do the paternity test. I don't. Can they do it in the stomach? Uh, no, no. Yeah, possibly can. Yes. But you could kill the kid. But yeah. he probably wants to anyway. So that's what I was thinking. Next time she has a cup of tea, put a little bit of poison in there, oh. knock the baby out, oh. send her into like a big unhappy depression, maybe get her admitted to a mental hospital, <laughs> then sell the business put the money somewhere safe and get rid of her. Oh, you a little harsh. You don't want a kid. Very a little bad harsh. Man. Very bad man. She's actually... Bad woman. She's bad actually... Woman. What if, if it's, is, it is his... What if it <coughs> is his child? Lewis, final say. Right. Uh, Andrew, you only care about the dosh, which, you know, fair enough, but you're not going to get out of it without losing some dosh, mate. But peace of mind is much... is worth much more than money. So... Fuck her off, take after the money, and live a good, happy life. Cool bananas. We don't have to say that. No. no. Oh. Happy ever after. Oh, so <laughs> don't, don't fuck her off, beep her off. <laughs> Be happy and live a good life. Do you know what I mean? If it's your kid, look after the kid, man, because it's, you know, your offspring and thing, but yeah. yeah. In, in other words, and I, I agree with you, a little spineless, make, make a decision about... Yeah, make a decision. Just, uh, just he's already made a decision, he, he wants, he he wants to get rid of it. He's got married to the first woman he slept with. Is it possible that A, he wasn't the first man that Ooh, she slept with, and therefore go. B, he's really shit in bed, so she uh, had to go elsewhere. Yeah. Most of the married women that I know... <laughs> in the biblical sense. Ladies no, most of the women that I knew uh, were okay. unhappy at home because the hubby oh. went... Wasn't, so maybe Andrew's not, That's you know, doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Please breathe through your ears, Andrew. <coughs> straight forward. Close shot on me. Thank you. We have to make an executive. We have to make an executive decision about the beautiful sunglasses that we are about to give away for the best letter or the most favourite. So is it letter one, two, or three? Number two. Number two. Number two. Letter number two. So we can give them to Andrew. Yeah, I feel sorry for Andrew. Yeah, no. So there's two for Andrew. Andrew's got money. He needs to decide. Even in this tough economic climate, he's minted. Letter number two. Liz, congratulations. Uh, I'm yes. Tony McManus. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being part of it. No. Gary back next week. Uh, sweet and sour. Uh, stay safe. We'll talk soon. Did a great job, Tony. Yeah. 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 Yeah.